Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Out and Ash Photography. Join me tonight as we finally got some clear skies yet again and we're going to be heading right into the middle of the Milky Way Spiral on Galaxy here in the summer months. Now it is June. We're going to be going after the Eastern Veil Nebula. Now I have done the Eastern Veil Nebula as a wide field. I've also done it as a little bit of a closer up, but mainly I want to try out something new that if you've seen in a community post, something that deals with this thing right here, something new that it's added to the backyard in the build that is soon to be completed here within the next couple of weeks. Now if you've seen in the community post about this, I have built something in here in preparation for the observatory that I am in the process of building. So you wonder what might be underneath here. I mean, it is a pretty easy guess, but let's unravel the, tr the tarp here and see what we got. It's like opening up Christmas. Well, would you look at that? First start, we have the permanent pier for the observatory ready to roll. And I have switched back over to my Explorer Scientific Refractor because we are going to be getting in nice and close to the Eastern Veil Nebula tonight. Now, you know, with a pier mount, we have a very sturdy planing surface where I could just keep this out here and it won't have any problems whatsoever when it comes to, you know, very impactful weather like strong winds. If you've been following the channel for a little while now, you know of an incident that happened during the winter months, unfortunately, when I had an Ioptron GEM 28 and during a snow squall, it actually got blown over because of that. That winds got up to about 40 50 miles an hour and a snow squall completely toppled the entire thing and it eventually it ruined the mount but now with this mount here we'll be able to have it very secure and this thing is cemented in the ground about three feet down so good news is a tornado will have to try and take this thing out before trying to fall over so hopefully that's not the case because we do get tornadoes around here unfortunately even though we are on the east coast and now the veil nebula is one of my all-time favorite nebula complexes which is not really technically a nebula it's actually a remnant of a supernova explosion that happened many thousands of years ago now i used to be looking at the veil nebula through a dobsonian telescope back in the late 2000s like 2008 2009 when I had a Mi 12 inch light bridge and it was always very interesting and fun to look at and you think, wow, this is really cool. My favorite part is actually the witch's broom when it has the very, very bright star right near the center of it. And you can actually see the entire structure of it, which is really cool, especially from the visual aspect. Now, many years down the line where I'm doing astrophotography now, I love being able to capture this every single year. Even though I've captured it several times now, it is still one of my all-time favorites. Now tonight I'm going to be using my 4-inch Explorer Scientific Refractor. It is a triplet with three uh, coated lenses here on the front. On top I'm going to be using my AM5 which is now on the brand new pier. With this little pier extension from ZWO2 which is nice because then I can also do all the adjustments that I need to to find out where true north is and do a polar alignment mm -hmm. or if I want to take the mount off and just you know use a regular tripod somewhere else I can do that with just the simple twist of these I am going to be using of course my ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro one shot color camera Inside of here in the filter wheel, I am going to be using a dual narrowband filter, which is the Optolong L Ultimate, which is a three nanometer bandpass filter that does hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. I am going to be guiding with the SV Bonnie 60 millimeter guide scope. The guide camera, which is actually what I use for planetary imaging and solar imaging, is the ASI 174mm. And of course, it's going to be controlled with the ZWO 
ASI Air, the brand new version that still has the TF card, as a matter of fact. So that is what we are going to be using tonight. So let's dive into where you can find the Eastern Vale Nebula and a little bit of some history behind it. Now the Eastern Vale Nebula NGC 6992, or also known as Caldwell 33, is a cloud of heated ionized gas and dust in the constellation of Cygnus and is located around 1,470 light years from Earth. It is part of what's something known as the Cygnus Loop, which is a faint supernova remnant that exploded approximately 7,000 years ago. From the moment the source of the star exploded until now, the Cygnus Loop supernova remnant expanded to a diameter roughly 3 degrees on the sky, which is about the equivalent to 6 full moons. The red that you see in a lot of the images taken of this is ionized hydrogen, which is in the H-alpha wavelength, while the cyans and some blues and greens are in the oxygen ions. Now you get to know exactly where it is in the sky and some history behind it. Let's wait until nightfall so we can go ahead and get set up for this evening. It is supposed to be clear, fingers crossed, which it hasn't really been as of lately, but I am noticing a little bit of some, well, looks like some haze up in the sky because become next week, we are going to be looking at our first heat wave of the season where we are going to be looking at every day. I'm out in the 90s and I'm going to be dealing with some haze, but at least it looks like we are going to be having some clear skies, thankfully the next day now is the very next day i got about six hours of data last night on the eastern veil nebula so i already run it through the stack so let's get a first hand impression of what we're looking at with the unlinked stretched in oh my goodness <laughs> the detail already looks fantastic in this let's bring it up a little bit and wow i must say this is probably one of the better images i got of this region it's amazing what a uh, very sturdy mount can do. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is do a little bit of some background extraction, which doesn't really look too bad in general. But I'm going to be using inside of the toolbox Graxpert. I've been using Graxpert a lot lately, and it's been very good to me, at least. And it's fairly quick as well, especially for the background extraction wise, where I don't really have to do anything. I just have to do one click and it runs it for me. There we go. Our background is now extracted. Let's go ahead and run some blur exterminator so we can uh, shrink our stars a little bit and do a little bit of some stellar sharpening. I just use the default settings to run it. After we run Blur Exterminator, we're going to now start to use Graxpur's Denoise, which I found to be actually better than RC Astro's Noise Exterminator, and it's also free too. So let's go ahead and run a Denoise over our image. This will take a little bit, as this process is definitely much slower than Noise Exterminator, but I think it does a better job too. That took a little bit longer than it anticipated, but now we have denoised their image. Now the next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of some color calibration since I did use the Optolong L Ultimate. And I already have the filters set right in here. Actually default in spectrophotometric color calibration. Select it for R, G, and B. And you just drag that right over. Since I'm not going to be doing the individual color passes for this one, since this target is strictly hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3, which what this uh, filter provides. And just using the default, I love the green. I know some people don't like the green and prefer the blue, but I really do like the green for this object in general. All right, now we have color calibrated our image. Let's go ahead and start to do some stretching. I like to use the Bill Blanchin's Link Stretch here, version 6. Go ahead and stretch our image. And this is already looking like a banger right off the bat. I mean, this looks <laughs> phenomenal, especially with the intricate details. You can see the outer shell of the supernova remnant, even all the way out through here. Not too bad at all. So we go ahead and we've already stretched our image. I'm going to go ahead and 
take out the stars so we can work on a little bit of some sharpening of the overall structure and play with some colors a little bit to kind of make them a little bit more vibrant. There we go. We have our star list and our stars image. Just going to rename the stars as stars and stick it off to the side for now. Now we're going to work on a little bit of the colors here. So the really simple thing I'm going to be using first is making a mask for the overall nebula in itself. Try and get much of it as possible. A little bit of some smoothness. Go ahead and drag and drop this over here and hide the mask. Go ahead and open up our curves transformation. Start adding some saturation to the mix. And it's already looking pretty darn good. Just a little touch up, not too bad. Don't need a whole lot for this one because the colors already look fantastic as it is. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this uh, mask that I have, going to invert it so I can darken up the background a little bit. Get some contrast in there. That looks good. Close that off. I am going to run some noise exterminator again, mostly for the background. Because after stretching, it does tend to have some color noise here and there, but we'll be able to fix that a little bit later. So I went ahead and did that. Do a little bit of some sharpening. I like to use the advanced sharpen tool inside of PixInsight, which does a really good job of sharpening everything in general. There we go. Now our nebula is looking sharp, especially these oxygen currents. Oh my goodness. I am starting to white out a little bit here, so we're going to go ahead and run a little bit of some HDR. Inside of the PixInsight toolbox, you have Create HDR Image, which I love doing this one anyway because it does such a phenomenal job. And you can see the live preview of it when it's happening. So we're going to zoom in a little bit and start playing with the strength of this. When you have uh, less layers, it's a little bit more aggressive in the overall HDR, where it says if I put it up to max, like 9, it's not as intense. And you can also mess with the luminance of everything. So I'm going to put this back at like a 5. Add the slightest bit of saturation. Get that nice green. Let me add a little contrast between the brighter areas and the darker areas. I think that looks pretty good right there. So we're going to go ahead and check mark that. Let it run through the process. And we'll go ahead and replace the image. There we go. This is already looking fantastic like it is. I have no complaints whatsoever. So now that's done, go ahead and go over to the stars. Do some SCNR to get rid of any green that's in the background of them. Invert it. SCNR again. Take it back. Go ahead and rename this as Starless. We're going to go ahead and combine the image already. I love easy targets like this because you don't have to go into absolute major detail. And what I captured last night is pretty darn good. Go ahead and combine them together. And bam, look at that image. That is looking fantastic. Although I'm not too happy with the size of the stars. I'm going to do a little bit of some star reduction. Go ahead 
Go ahead and run this tool. Going to make sure I do a uh, small star protection because it just makes it look better because uh, there is a lot more stars in this field of view. And that looks pretty good. And voila, there's a final image right there of the Eastern Veil vale Nebula with only about six hours of data from a backyard in one single night. Thank you everyone for watching today. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're fairly close to 1,000 subscribers. Getting very close to start adding a little bit of some monetization to the channel, which is definitely much help. Also have affiliate links to the equipment that I have from Agena Astro and High Point Scientific. If you wanna, you know, treat yourself to something, it does help me out when you use those affiliate links because I'm trying to get a little bit more funds to finish this observatory sometime this summer. Thank you for watching everyone, clear skies, and I will see you in the next one.